Hey guys, in this video we're going to do another spindle bearing upgrade on the G0704 milling machine. And the reason for this upgrade is to try and reduce spindle runout. Now, this is the second bearing upgrade that I've done. The first one was when I did my belt drive conversion and I went from the factory taper roller bearings to angular contact bearings. Now, the reason why I chose the angular contact bearings is because like with so many other things on my G0704, I was copying what Haas did and he re recommended those bearings. And the whole point there was to try and get higher RPM because some people had reported that if you were going to a belt drive and you were pushing four, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 RPMs, your factory taper roller bearings were probably going to overheat and cause you all kinds of problems. I didn't actually have that problem, but I didn't get a chance to test it because I swapped over to those angular contact bearings uh, during the belt drive conversion. Here is a card in the top right corner of your screen if you'd like to go watch that video where I disassembled the spindle. I'm not going to go into the disassembly in this video since I I've already covered it before. Now, the bearings that I'm going with uh, for this new setup are Nachi Taper Roller Bearings, and this is based on a recommendation of mine from uh, LC Vet. Here is a card to his YouTube channel. Um, he's been getting really, really good, or I should say, a very, very small amount of runout on his mill, and uh, he kept recommending to me that I swap over to these uh, Nachi. Um, tapered roller bearings and uh, so I have. Also, it allowed me to do a couple of other things, uh, one of which was to remove the custom spacers that I had made when going to the taper or when going to the angular contact bearings. And then second, it gave me another opportunity uh, while having the mill apart to do some machining on the uh, quill or gear hub, which is uh, part of the, uh, the whole drive assembly. So we're going to watch a little bit of that too. So right away you can see I've got a a dial indicator stuck up inside of the spindle. Now, because I can't line a dial indicator up perfectly perpendicular to the spindle axis, we're not getting a 100% one-to-one uh, -one reading here due to cosine error. So uh, as you can see, I'm measuring about somewhere around a thou or 1.2 thou. And then I swap over to this Shars dial test indicator, and I've talked about how much I dislike this indicator in the past simply because it's so sticky and it just jumps around. But again, you can see I'm getting right around one thou worth of run out. Now, I've always just kind of assumed that was okay for a machine of this grade, so I didn't really bother to try and improve it. Um, but due to uh, uh, my buddy's prodding, um, I finally swapped over to the uh, to the uh, the new tapered roller bearing. So uh, these are those bearings. Uh, pause right here and write down those part numbers. I believe you search with the K1512 and the K1505 part numbers. I got these on Amazon. I want to say it was around $60 shipped. Um, there is one thing I'm going to show you about the disassembly, and that is a, a really just quick and dirty puller that I made to pull the, the spindle out of the head. And I posted uh, a couple of pictures of this on Instagram and people were telling me, oh man, my spindle drops right out. I, I don't have any of this problem. I don't understand why you have to pull it. Well, mine does not drop right out and I can't even hammer it out. And the reason for that is because of the uh, rubber hockey puck that I have jammed up inside of the quill as a vibration dampener and that rubber would not let go. Um, I didn't want to hammer the bearings in the quill completely apart, um, you know, by getting too aggressive with a large hammer. So it made more sense to just kind of, to kind of create some kind of polar to, uh, separate the spindle from the head from this other angle all I have to do is twist it with a wrench and the spindle comes right out I mean it didn't take any work in fact it felt like it should have just fallen right out and had I not known better I would have said man the spindle probably would have just fallen right out it really didn't take any work at all to do it with the puller okay now what we're going to do is hop over to the lathe and I'll show you what I did on the hub. I had two goals here. Try and find out if this thing was out of balance um, just by checking for run out. And then second of all, I wanted to machine these gears off because if they're out of balance, it's going to contribute even more so because they're further away from the center line. And then also um, having the gears there makes it more difficult to uh, remove the bearings if I ever have to remove the bearings uh, again in the future. So what you could see is I had the indicator set up on that a larger bearing surface. I'm using aluminum pads here to make sure I don't mar the surface with the four jaw. And then I would uh, get it dialed in, 
Move the indicator to the front bearing surface, tap it around with a plastic hammer till it was lined up. Then I would go back to the larger bearing surface. And I went back and forth several times. And what you can see here is once I've got both bearing surfaces in line, there's about four thousandths of run out on this center rough part of the casting. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is contributing to vibration. And you might want to check it out on your machine because apparently on some G0704s, that center section is totally rough casting, not machined at all, and that's really going to lead to vibration. Mine actually ran out less than I thought, but uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and machine all of this off anyway. So because I enjoy watching sped up footage of uh, lathe turning, uh, you are going to get to watch sped up footage of lathe turning. I'm going to cut here and let you watch a little bit, and then I'll be back with you in a minute and we'll wrap it up. Okay, here we are all put back together, except for the small pulley that goes on the spindle splines. And that's because, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do two tests, one where we're not uh, using belt tension to pull the splines and then a second test where we are using belt tension to see if it impacts run out and it does but you're going to see by how much here in just a second so again we got cosine error with the big dial indicator but you can see we're reading almost nothing it's just kind of bobbling back and forth a little bit and at the beginning of the video we were measuring about 1.2 thou or maybe one thou so here we are with the dial test indicator and as you can see uh, that needle is almost not moving at all. That means way less than a tenth of a thou. Um, we're going to speed this up just a bit. Here you can see I've got the uh, belt reinstalled. And just so you know I'm not cheating, uh, here we are with the Noga base. I'm going to sweep it past zero in both directions. And then we'll zoom in real tight. Uh, here I'm still getting it dialed in. And uh, this is the run out with the belt fully tensioned. And as you can see, it's still less than a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. So that means we've gone from somewhere around one thou to somewhere around a tenth of a thou, which just blows my mind. I, I measured this multiple times and kept taking the indicator away from the spindle and then setting it back up, raising and lowering the position, trying to, um, in the spindle bore to make sure that I was getting a correct reading. And sure enough, we're talking about a tenfold improvement on run out. Amazing. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to post them below. I will see you in the next one.